Attention all pet lovers, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to break down information that you absolutely need to know about one of the most common pet drug poisonings. Join me, you'll learn something today. I had a patient come in after having ingested this drug just this past week and it made me realize that I had missed covering ibuprofen, so let's fix that now. For humans, ibuprofen is a commonly used medication. It comes in a number of different formulas and strengths, and it seems to have a pretty wide margin of safety. People use it for short-term pain or for helping to control fevers. Some people also use it more long-term to help manage arthritis pain. However, in our cats, dogs, and ferrets, this is not an okay medication to give. It is incredibly unsafe to give ibuprofen to your pets. I do see fairly frequent ibuprofen toxicities in the clinic and they tend to happen for two reasons. One, people think that their pet is in pain and they give their pet ibuprofen instead of seeing their veterinarian for safe and effective pain management. Second, I will see these ibuprofen toxicities because the animals have gotten into some of the medication in the home. Usually when people are out, some of these ibuprofen formulas are liquids or they are coated and it seems that some of our pets find these formulas pretty tasty and it is a pretty regular occurrence that pets will eat as much of what's left in the bottle as they possibly can. Now it can vary a little bit from year to year but the ASPCA Animal Poison Control Center commonly lists ibuprofen as one of if not the most commonly reported drug associated with pet poisonings. Part of the reason this drug is so toxic is because it undergoes something called enterohepatic recirculation. So the ibuprofen will pass through your pet's liver and then instead of being excreted through feces or urine, it ends up recirculating through the blood again and then passing through the pet's organs repeatedly. So what symptoms might we notice for an animal that's ingested ibuprofen? Well, at low doses, we tend to see GI upset. Animals can have gastric ulcers, they can have vomiting, diarrhea, inappetence, but they can also have things like GI perforation, which can be fatal. We can also see melanoma or weight loss due to inappetence. As the mg per kg dose gets higher, then the risks to the kidneys also increases. Ibuprofen blocks the dilation ability of blood vessels that bring blood to the kidneys. And what that means is the kidneys don't get the blood flow they need, and this can cause kidney failure. If the pet had pre-existing kidney disease, or if they're dehydrated, say from the GI upset, vomiting, diarrhea, not wanting to eat or drink, Drink, or if they have stressors or some other medications already on board. When the doses get quite high, this is when we start to see neuro symptoms. The pets might have seizures, they could go into a coma, they could collapse, they could also die. Cats are twice as sensitive to ibuprofen as dogs are, and we also have to be quite concerned about ferrets simply because of their very low body weight. If a ferret ingests one tablet of ibuprofen, this can put them way over what the fatal dose of ibuprofen is and can cause immense harm. After a pet ingests ibuprofen, a great aggressive and rapid decontamination is of the utmost importance. This means seeking veterinary care immediately, and it may mean that you need to go to an emergency or specialty hospital to get your pet the care that they need. So what exactly does this treatment look like? It means that sometimes we will need to induce vomiting, but this depends on how much your pet has ingested and when they ingested it. It's also going to be crucial that they receive many doses of activated charcoal. This is to help bind the ibuprofen because as we talked about earlier, it undergoes that enterohepatic recirculation. We need to give the activated charcoal multiple doses of it over 
24 hour time period. The veterinarian you see may also need to do things like gastric lavage. It will be very important that your pet goes on IV fluids. This is to help combat that dehydration that can exacerbate the severity of the effects that your pet experiences from the ibuprofen. We also need to give medications that are gastroprotectants. We need to give medications for nausea. Animals might need blood transfusions if they do have a perforation to the GI tract that is a surgical repair. We also need to do repeated blood panels and urinalysis panels for a couple of days. This is because the injury to the kidneys especially may not show up immediately. If the pet experiences seizures, those of course also need to be treated. And some people discuss things like therapeutic plasma exchange. Now you do need very specialized equipment in order to be able to do this, but basically think of it a little bit like dialysis that people with kidney issues might experience. But in this case, the blood is removed from the animal's body. The cells are separated out. The plasma part of the blood is treated and then the blood gets put back into the body of the animal. There is some case reports on this showing that this can reduce the amount of toxicity in the animal's body by about 85%. As I'm known for saying on this channel, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure here. Make absolutely certain that your medication cabinets are safe, out of reach, and unable to be accessed by all of the pets in your home. It may be helpful to use things like child locks on cabinets, etc., to help keep your animals out of those cabinets. And absolutely do not ever, never, ever, ever give your animals ibuprofen if you think they're painful. I mean, don't give them anything without speaking to a veterinarian first, but definitely do not give them ibuprofen. It will harm them. Do not do it. I hope that the information in this video has been helpful for you. If you have a video topic you'd like me to cover in the future, please comment it down below. I also highlight a comment every single week as I read every comment that you leave for me and I love to interact with you in the comment section of these videos. I do post a new video most Fridays and I can't wait to see you in the next one. All right, bye. Today I also have my cat supervising behind me. I'll try to get a picture of him close up. My dog is also here on the other side of me. They must know that I need supervision to make these videos. <laughs>